Let's focus for a moment on those images that have come in today that show the rover, the rover Pragyana in action. We put that out on our screens right now. The first video that ISRO has released that shows the rover actually getting down from the land of Vikram. There you have it, coming down on a slope on the wheels and then going onto the surface of the moon. Let's explain that in greater detail by getting in experts on this broadcast. Joining us here is Dr. Amitabh Bhagosh, NASA scientist. We also have Mr. Arvind Paranjape, who is, in fact, uh, the chief of the Nehru Planetarium in Mumbai. He's joining us from New Jersey this evening. Uh, Dr. Ghosh, to you first. Good evening. Uh, can you explain to us how really this rover works? Completely made in India, but importantly, there are about 27 mechanisms, which is what Isra has explained, 26 mechanisms, actually, that bring this rover together and has enabled it to actually move down on its own out of the uh, lander, out of Vikram and onto the surface of the moon. So once you land, what you do is you do a health check of the rover and the lander. You f see, you check out all the subsystems, the mobility subsystem, the communication subsystem. And if you find everything right, then you um, retract, the, you, you roll out the ramp. So the rolling out the ramp is kind of a non-reversible step in most cases. I don't know for Israel, for NASA at least. So you have to be very careful that you're doing it right. And then um, you have to very carefully, you know, lower the rover. Just remember that if something happens while rolling out the, while the rover drives off the ramp, there is no way to correct it. There's no human being on the moon to fix it and, you know, bring it up or if it overturned to straighten it. So um, so that is the process that you saw. And each of these processes are interrupted by um, data is being constantly beamed back and the, the controllers at ISRO are looking at it and then again sending commands. So everything is done being done incrementally. For the landing you saw, it was an automated, completely automated sequence, right? Mm -hmm. Here there is active interference. There's, there's a human in the loop, we call it. So... So, so that is what is happening. Interesting. And, you know, when I was speaking to uh, the former ISRO chief, to Mr. Sivan, he made a point about why the Chandra 3 cost is so less, because all of it is India-made, including the rover. Mr. Arvind Paranjpe, am I right in saying that every part of that rover has been made by our scientists, India-made? See, it's not just me. I think the scientific community as a whole, they're looking for yes, the Yes, that was to Mr. Paranjpe. Mr. Paranjpe? Mr. Um, Paranjipi, that question to... is to you. Alicia, are we getting the system? I'll come back to you, Dr. Gursh. Mr. Paranjipi, can you answer that particular question for us? Mr. Paranjipi, about uh, how, you know, this has been completely India-made? I think so, yes. It is completely made by Indian scientists, tested on Indian land, and made some, I, I suppose, uh, what I news I get is that they had made some um, uh, artificial surface to test out how it would move on the surface of the moon. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is an indigenous uh, buggy or rover as we call it. But you know, let's talk about exploration. Dr. Ghosh, if I can bring you in now, uh, let's talk about really what we can see in the next 14 days. As someone who's a NASA scientist and you've of course been a part of these kind of missions before, what's got you most excited about this particular mission, about what Chandrayaan-3 could perhaps find on the moon? See, it's not just me. I think the scientific community as a whole they're looking for the distribution and composition of the ice. Having said that, um, I don't know how far the craters are. Mm. Um, I don't know whether, even if they're close, whether there is a there is see there is a drivability issue. There are no roads on the moon, so you have to drive this rover very carefully through a tract of um, soil or regolith, uh, uh, which is which is non-hazardous. So so it has to be also drivable. So that is the single most, I think. But in general, you know, um, even if you got that analysis, that would not be the only analysis. I'm, there'll be NASA missions and there'll be other country missions, surely, to have data. It's a large, large region. You have to find out a lot of information. Um, but um, the other information would be the general um, geology of the area, um, the composition of the regolith, the composition of soils, if um, the composition of the rocks, if they analyze a rock with the alpha proton X-ray spectrometer, there's a variety of geological questions that are very interesting.
But, you know, I, I again want to bring the focus back to that uh, video that is was released today. You can't see enough of it, of the rover coming down onto the surface of the moon. If you can just play that, because my question next, Mr. Paranjapay, uh, it's about that particular footage. Uh, and when you see, really, the rover, Pragyan, coming out of lander Vikram and coming onto the surface of the moon, you see a heavy shadow on the lunar surface. Uh, is that normal? Is there, like, a spotlight there, or is that how naturally the moon is lit? Up. Oh yeah, that is that 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 is very clear that it yeah, oh, it is in the south pole well? of the moon. Actually, the south pole of the moon was chosen for two reasons. One is that it is um, that uh, part of the moon that is uh, comparing between north and south pole of the moon. South pole is uh, towards the uh, sun, and therefore it gets it does get a lot of the moon. And also we have chosen the south pole of the moon because that's where um, water was discovered. So what shadow and light that we get, it's a perfectly normal. There is nothing wrong in it. In fact, this place will have now uh, sunlight for coming uh, 14 days or uh, say now the 12 days. Uh, where Because you see the day, the total day on the moon is something like uh, 14 hours. And the day and night put together, it is something um, uh, 28 hours, you know, um, uh, that is a period. Uh, that is a lunar period that we know, nakshatras, etc. So it's a 20 days plus certain time. So this is perfectly normal. I don't see anything wrong. In fact, it's a beautiful images that I have seen uh, sent by my friends.